Before I continue, do you feel welcome yet? You are, ne? You are welcome yet. You are. Um, but but I, I think it would be a lie from me if I don't acknowledge the presence. Um, she's already shaking her head. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, I have to do this. Mezanele Mbeki, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for being one of us. And to make you feel better, I'll acknowledge my other friends as well as we continue, you know, just to make you feel better because they are in here and they are powerhouses of women and they, I don't believe that they would be who they are and where they are if they were not the likes of Membeki. So, the other powerhouse is going to give us a background <laughs> and a context for this evening. Uh, Dr. Edith Pasane, who is a senior lecturer uh, at Timali. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Timali, as uh, you've been welcomed by Professor Zondi as well. And I really, really appreciate the fact that you are here, all of you today, and you came all with your num in your numbers. And also, I want to appreciate the men that are among us here, because usually when we do this kind of events, we have few men, and I'm really, really grateful that we have more men today. Uh, can we also uh, recognize, acknowledge them? A warm round of applause to everyone. <laughs> We, I think this dialogue is important for us as Timali. And there's something that I noticed today. I don't know why today. But this thing is, why am I standing on this thing? Yeah. I feel so tired. Yeah, I feel, I feel awkward. Uh, so it's when you, Microsoft has not really, cannot pick up decolonial. And I was like, really? I don't know. Maybe it's my computer, but maybe. It's not picking up, and I'm like, Bill Gates, for real. You know, you have not picked up this yet. You know, and I think, I think, I think we need to complain. Because when I, it's not recognizable on, on Microsoft, when you type on Microsoft, Word does not recognize decolonial. But you write colonial, it does. <laughs> it does recognize it. So Timali and, and what we stand for as Timali is to fill the epistemological gap that has been left by mainstream academia in our knowledge. And also, as we know, Timali is about the rebirth of Africa, it's about a struggle for Africa's renewal, this continuous struggle. And also, at Timali has been, uh, uh, what I can say is that Timali has been engaged in a decolonized African curriculum since its inception. We are talking five, six years back. This is the reason why Timali is here, because it came specifically to fill this epistemological gap. And we are one of the few institutions in this country and also on the continent who does not really talk about decolonized curriculum. We also offer it. And I think most of our students, some of them who are here, can attest to this. Over the years, we have offered a course on African feminism and gender studies. And basically this dialogue is about also enhancing this course. We want to enhance this course. We want you to be in the moment, in the contemporary, to understand the new challenges that are arising out of everything that we, we are struggling for. So the, the dialogue is important for us because we understand that feminism is born out of it was not born in academic spaces. It was born out of academic spaces by women who were in a struggle for uh, anti-colonial, anti-imperialism, uh, anti-capitalism, uh, 
you can think about all those anti that we talk about. The women were struggling. This was a struggle for resistance by women. So it's important that we continue to talk about this within academia so that we can see how, how we enhance uh, this struggle. And at Timali, we understand uh, feminism as an instrument for, for social change. And if you like, you can add political change, economic change, and all the changes that we want to see in society. And our course have developed in such a way that it deals with theoretical and practical understanding of the role of African feminism in influencing change in development of the African state. So it centers women's demands within national questions. And this is not unique to the African context because streams of third world feminism have explored this in the post-colonial era as well. So the, the course that we offer here assess feminism in relation to the state, African state in particular, feminism as a force for those anti-colonial, anti-imperialist struggles, and it also assess feminism in relation to socialism and nationalism. And not forgetting that a lot of women uh, were written out out of the liberation, who participated in the liberation struggle were also written out. So uh, the cause offers a us a chance to invoke those uh, powerful women that we have. And also, you know, the, our cause also, what it does, it critically expose, explores different forms of feminism there, there are different modules, so one of them will deal with uh, those forms of feminism that has to do with liberal, Marxist, and radical feminist, and, and as you know, we also had Patricia McFadden here, who also uh, 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 writes about radical feminism, and so those kind of work, that's what we do for, that, that we engage in here at Timali. But despite the fact that there's different forms and strands of, of feminism, what brings us together as feminists is resistance. Resistance for social change about conditions of women worldwide. Because oftentimes, you know, when women don't agree ideologically, they are labeled as enemies of themselves. This is what we hear. Oh, women, yeah, they are enemies of themselves, those who don't really mind them. Uh, they, you know, they backstab each other, they do. And forgetting that even men have ideological, ideological clashes. They do. We have men who don't agree ideologically. But for them, it's an academic exercise, and for them, it's allowed. But for us, it's, it's enemies of ourselves. So I think, uh, you know, this comes from people who are trying to homogenize us as women. You know, from thinking about homogeneity, you think that women, just because there's a group of women, they think the same, they must think the same. If they are radical feminists, they must all be radical fem feminists. And then you don't even allow those clashes. Even in the struggle of, decolonial, of decolonizing feminism as well, of decolonized feminism, whatever we call it, there are those in the decolonial discourse or in, in the decolonial epistemic thought who are thinking now is the time to manage us. And we saw this uh, you know, erupting somewhere in the in UCT because people thought they could manage women. Yeah, this is not as bad as black feminism. Yeah, we can think about decolonial feminism, then we will, we will go back to tradition, back to feudalism, and be able to, to manage them. And that's what not decolonial feminism is about. It's not about managing us. And if you're a decolonial scholar and you're thinking that this is the time to manage women, it, this is not, unfortunately. Uh, and therefore, in, in this sense, in African context, feminism has emerged out of women's deep 
engagement with and commitment to national liberation. And African feminism is a feminist epistemology and a form of rhetoric that has provided arguments which validate the experiences of women of Africa and of African origin against a mainstream feminist discourse. So it is justice, it's about justice. Justice that aims to create a discernible difference between women who were colonized and those who were deemed the colonizers. So it's a struggle for self-determination, for conceptual self-identification, and socio-cultural recognition for black and brown women. So it confronts the falsehood of unquestioned, unquestioned and depoliticized sisterhood. That's, that's what uh, African feminism is about. So then when we speak about decolonial feminism, I think that we will, we will, we, the, the whole idea today is to begin to, to think about this. We have not had the space. So we are trying to mark the celebration of uh, August month by running this series of, 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 of thinking about decolonial feminism. So in our mind, we are thinking of an annual event where we will, we will deal with this and we are seeking partnership. We have partnered right now with the uh, University of Pretoria, the Department of Political Science as well, because they also, those ones, they are still struggling to, to decolonize. <laughs> we don't know, we are not sure whether they will be able to, but we are here for everyone who, estimately <laughs> we are here for you who wants to decolonize the, uh, the curriculum. We are currently working with CHS as well, uh, the College for Graduate Studies here. Uh, I can see Prof. Sikhalo is here. And, and we are welcoming the University of Pretoria and we thank them for being here as well. So decolonial feminism is located within what uh, my best academic orator, William Mpof, who is not here today, uh, used to talk about drawing from Enric Dissel. He calls it liberal philosophy or the philosophy of liberation. And a part of this liberal philosophy is a philosophy of the enslaved, colonial, racialized, oppressed, exploited people of the world. It's a philosophy that looks for solution. It's different from analytical philosophy that looks for the nature of meaning, you know, those kind of things. This one, it looks for solution. It is also concerned about existential realities. What do we do now? And how do we survive the next day? This type of philosophy is, 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 is born in struggle. Tabo Mbeki is a liberal philosopher, so is, I mean, sorry, is a liberation philosopher. Let me not say <laughs> liberal. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> liberation philosopher, right? Uh, so. So that kind of philosophy, we are talking a different kind of philosophy from the one that you are doing mainstream. And that's why you won't be surprised that we have the Black August uh, seminar coming. Most of you know it's coming. And it's coming out of this type of debate about what is philosophy. Because African people or African authors, African writers, African thinkers have been reduced to biographies not really people who can think and do uh, things. So doing decolonial uh, feminism is about depatriarchization, de-westernization, decolonization. It's third world, uh, third world alliance because it seeks to dismantle all forms of oppression, which is the hallmark of black feminism. So decolonial feminism recognizes that ideas on their own cannot bring about change. It's good that we are sitting here today, we are engaging in a dialogue, and that we have people who are writing papers, who are writing books, who will talk to us. But ideas on their own cannot transform. That's why it's necessary that sometimes we need mass mobilization. And this is where activism comes in. And that's why we are creating this space so that we can begin to engage with women who are activists who are not necessarily in the academic space, but also can help inform us of the new struggles and what are the challenges uh, in terms of, 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 of women's condition. And it's also critical of how we locate 
ourselves. This decolonial feminism is critical of how we locate ourselves within a state. That's a very empower, a, a powerful uh, a way of looking at it. Because the state does not recognize poor, black, indigenous, impoverished women. It does not recognize them. So we need to start to think about all those things. It originates within those struggles that I have already mentioned, anti-colonial, anti-sexist, uh, and all, all those. So unlike post-coloniality, because post-coloniality, uh, it's about societies which have been through colonialism. It emerged around the 1947 out of intellectual work on nationalism, and particularly by most authors of post-coloniality who are people who migrated to the metro metropolis, uh, post-colonial, in, in the post-colonial period as well, Said. We, you can name all of them that you think of. Uh, but decoloniality is formulated by men due to their privileged position, by the way, in the academy. However, it recognizes the exploitation of women in the same situation. The, the, the same, we are in the same situation of oppression with men. But at the same time, we are treated differently. This is what it, it needs to grapple with. And so it also questions the limits of intersectional, intersectionality in how it has been appropriated by the mainstream through the politics of inclusion. Now that inter, inter, intersectionality is common, people think by just having a queer body here and a black woman here, then all the problems should be solved and we leave the structures intact. So this is where we need to be start to think when we're talking of decolonized for, uh, curriculum, to think about the very structures that create these differences. Mm. That they are the ones that decolonial feminisms aim to dismantle. And it's also critical of the state as a, as a part of colonial matrix of power. And it's also questioning whether should we negotiate or argue with the state or should we operate outside the state? These are the, some of the questions that decolonial uh, feminism is, is, is talking about. It exposes the darker side of modernity. And I mean, uh, the work that can inform you about decolonial feminism that w as a start, if you have not been in this uh, 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 work, you can start looking at the work of Enrique Dussel, uh, McDonald de Torres, um, Anibal Cujano, uh, Ramon Grossfogel, Walter Mignolo, Ngugi Watiwongo, Sabel Ndlofu, Pablo Casanova, uh, Floribeto Diaz as well. All of those uh, uh, Maria Lugonos, you can think about uh, many others that you can, you can add on the, on the discourse of, of coloniality. And Maria Lugonos is very important because she gives us the, the, the concept of the coloniality of gender, drawing on Quijano's work on coloniality of power. So our biggest task now is to begin to, tra to trace genealogies of decolonial feminism in Africa. So this is what we need to do, to excavate. Those works, those women, whether they are in the arts, they are in the, they are writing literature, they are writing, you can think of all those women who have been writing. Start to read their work and look for how, how they engage with, their work, engage with their work with humility. Because oftentimes when we, le we read black work, we, we, we read it with a colonial eye. So decoloniality is asking for a different question. To go to those work with humility, understanding that they were dismissed at the time. So this is about time to go and dig the archives and take them out and begin to work with them. And it, I mean, uh, decolonial uh, uh, feminism also grapples with how knowledge produced outside academia gets erased in the academia. So it must start to begin with those kind of questions. How, and it also must begin to ask questions, how do we learn to create citational practices that ch challenges conventional practices of the academy? We need to begin to think about in decolonial feminism. And black feminism by its very nature 
Uh, we know that it originates out of resistance struggle as well, uh, but its limitation has been in not sufficiently dealing with indigenity. We, two weeks ago, we were in Brazil, and it was interesting that people were talking about decentary black feminism. You, they say decentary US black feminism, and they were from the US. It's US people were talking about decentering black youth feminism. And one of my friends who is here said, you know, uh, US black feminism is like it's dollar. It, it, <laughs> it travels the world, which is good. It has given us. And, and for the first time when we read black, black feminism uh, from the US, we started to see something that was common to us. And it has liberated so many of us. But in the US already now, they are talking about decentering it because it is becoming hegemonic, a point of reference, and then also erasing other women. So part of, of the school uh, that we attended at the Transnational School of, 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 of Decolonial Feminism was about all those issues around decentering uh, US black feminism. And, and they are also emphasizing that we need to ev evoke tradition and African ancestry in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the discourse as well. And we need political solidarity across national borders. So those are some of the things and, uh, that we, we, we've been discussed there. And, you know, it was black feminism that has contributed so much to, to our liberation and many liberation as well. And, and therefore, uh, you know, it also gave us conception, conceptual tools like intersectionality, you know. So, so we are not really saying we, we dismiss everything, but we're saying bring. We Africans, we must take also knowledge. I, I, is it, um, who's this author? And the Nigerian one, things fall apart. Chino Ashev says, Africa produces what it does not consume, and it consumes what it does not produce, right? It's Chino Ashev. So we need to begin to, uh, to, to co contribute to the world, because decoloniality is asking us different questions about what do we bring on the world stage as well as Africans, and make it part of the mainstream not just African, because everything about us is labeled African woman, African leader, African, everything about us. <laughs> so it needs to be part of the mainstream. And some of the questions that it, we are asking is about how can we in, uncover those knowledges? How do we retrieve those sources of knowledge that are not academic in nature? How do we use conce colonial concepts to describe why should we be using colonial concepts to describe or interpret these struggles? And this one, particularly, the Bolivian uh, leader, Tariq Mamani, was actually questioning around this. And, and here I quote uh, what he's saying. He was saying, uh, uh, he was saying that placing foreign names on our villages, our cities, and our continents, our everything is equivalent to subjecting our identity to the will of our invaders and their heirs." Close quote. So we need to begin to talk about our realities. So in conclusion, the Tabombeki African Leadership Institute proposes to host this dialogue. And here today we are marking the first of this dialogue uh, in celebration of our Women's Month and we are seeking to partner with uh, various institutions on this. And we wish, or we would like to speak, to, 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 to offer, or to provide and build a space of dialogue between African, black, and decolonial feminism on the continent through intersecting social movements and academic production in an effort to bridge the gap between theory and practice. And we recognize also that uh, Studies on feminism originate outside the academic space as they are rooted in the tradition of struggle and resistance carried by oppressed people. So while we are aware that knowledge is, is fundamental for, for, for social transformation, we are interested in its production and dissemination that it should reach even those people who cannot be within academia. Thank you very much.